Welcome to this edition of Diligent Institutes Inside Today's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, and I'll be your host for today's show. Today, we're going to be looking at corporate board members, what directors think survey. And joining me to have that discussion is Melanie Nolan, who's the research editor for Chief Executive Group and Corporate Board Member. Welcome back, Melanie. Thank you for having me, TK. Always a pleasure to be here. So this is the 20th anniversary of the annual survey. And um, to say I know a little bit about the survey would be an understatement since I was there on day on year one. Um, so I've always felt attached to this in a very positive way and it's great information. Um, so um, I thought it would be good, you know, if we sort of take, took, took a look at the highlights, you know, of what happened. So interestingly, I, I want to start with a sort of a different area because I know that you, as part of your process, have individual conversations with directors as well. So rather than discuss, you know, um, what's on the agenda, I'm curious from your perspective of how they felt that was not on the agenda, you know, board agendas that sort of should be on. But that's a good question. I, I don't think that there is one issue that I haven't seen show up on board's agenda these past few years. So that's a tough one. Now, in terms of what they wish was more on the agenda, then that's definitely an answer. And that's always been the case these past few years of crisis uh, and that strategy. Um, directors are telling us in the survey and anecdotally that they're spending so much time uh, extinguishing the fires today. Um, they don't have enough time now to focus on what, what their main role is supposed to be, which is the long-term um, strategy for the company. Um, I think that also what marks me in terms of what's not on the agenda is maybe the extent to which these issues do appear. So for instance, for talent and culture, we didn't see that as much on Everboard's agenda, you know, a decade ago. Um, today it's there, it's, a, it's an agenda topic and it, if it's not near the top, I'd be very surprised. But the extent to which directors are actually getting into that conversation is still very different. So for some, you're gonna have um, like really digging down into the talent issue where they're gonna have one-on-ones with frontline employees. They invite them to the boardroom and have discussions. They'll be attending company-wide events. Um, it's just things like that for others. Um, talent remains more more of a top line issue where they'll review the reports from the CHRO or hear directly from that person. They'll, um, they'll review hotline comments and survey results and so on and so forth. So, I mean, the extent to which these issues are all, even though they're all on the agenda today, they are very different in how boards are approaching them individually. So I think to me, the question is more, I'm curious to see five years from now, hopefully by then we'll be out of, of this situation. So five years from now, are all these issues going to stick around at the board level or are we going to start seeing them regress a little bit back out of the agenda as they were before? Well, I think you'll see certainly a change at the top. If we look back in five year multiples, you know, there's certainly like cyber wasn't in there for you know a while and you know, they're always sometimes regulation or the or the uh, political uh, happenings around the world. Uh, but one thing you're right, one thing never changes from day one of this survey. Directors have said that they need more time to do strategic planning. So I bet you five years from now, that will not change again. So. <laughs> you're probably right. So let's get into some of the highlights. So one of my favorite questions is the results from which issues do you find most challenging in your role as director today? So what sort of has crept to the top as far as being most challenging? So the top contenders on that list, they haven't changed that much in the past couple of years. Uh, we're finding cybersecurity, as you mentioned, digital transformation. Those two are topping the list with very good reasons. Uh, they're such fluid issues. They're evolving extremely rapidly. And if you're a director that's coming onto a board without that specific expertise, it's very difficult to wrap your head around everything that surrounds these issues. So I think I'm, I'm not surprised that they're sticking around. Directors are, are continue to say that 
especially cyber. This is this is an area that's that directors will continue to, to struggle with because it's evolving um, on an, almost on a daily basis. But the third one this year on that list is capital allocation. And that to me is very telling of the economic environment that we're in <clears throat> right now because um, companies are having to account for the potential recession in the near term, but they're also expecting it to be very short lived. So they don't want to go full bear mode and miss opportunities for the recovery either. So what I'm hearing outside of the survey and in, in conversations is on capital allocation is exactly how to strike that right balance. Where do you take the risks? You know, considering the era that we're in, that everything, I mean, even though you're, you're, you're forecasting a short lived recession, is that really what's going to happen? So there's a big balance to, to, to have here. And, and that's a, that's a challenge for boards today, at least in this, in this environment. Yeah. No big surprise uh, with <laughs> cyber being in there because, yeah. you know, when I think about it, first of all, nobody can get their arms around it. It's, it's such an evolving issue and, I don't know if it'll ever really go away. But the other reason is, you know, there's a large segment of older directors that really didn't have to deal during their career with cyber issues. And so they've got a double challenge. Not only is it tough to get your arms around, but this is something that they don't maybe have experience on. So they have to do more research as a director, you know, to keep pace with what's going on. So, um, Absolutely. You know, it's it's um, same is true with digital transformation as far as their experience. So um, it keeps directors on their toes in a way to keep For on sure. top of these issues. But so the other thing I wanted to do is sort of not look back, but sort of look forward, you <laughs> know, and this. And I know that uh, uh, annually there's a question about uh, what strategies boards are likely to focus on. And I think this year you asked in 23 and 24. So I'm curious on what ended up at the top of the list uh, as they look forward. So it's interesting if you look at the list because the top five focus areas of the survey can be summed up in one word, really. And that's growth. So we found uh, in that order growing revenue, increasing profitability, exploring M&A, and then accelerating or continuing the digital transformation projects. So these are all pertaining to growth. But then the fifth one, again, interesting to me, I feel kind of ties into this current environment. So it was streamlining operations. So still doing all we need to grow, but keeping an eye on expenditures, at least as long as this recession is looming. So I'm seeing it almost like a, a growth with minimal risk or as minimal as it can be. I, I thought that the first five issues on that list were very telling of, we can't give up on growth, but we also got to be smart about it. Yeah, I would, I, you know, that, I think we could probably have those five in, in really in any year, even in a non, you know, uh, recession, you know, type of year, because that's just the crux of, you know, um, of any plan on how are we going to continue to grow and bring value to the organization. So, you know, it's probably a pretty positive thing that, you know, that sort of that's it. They sort of the, the plan is pretty clear ahead of them. You know, maybe not some of the tactics or specific strategies aren't as clear, but certainly the general goals for the organization, I think, are pretty clear. So um, that's encouraging to hear. So um, where can where will people be able to get a copy of the full resort results? And is that available yet? Yes. Yeah, so the the PDF is available for download, which is the, the what directors think um, white paper that we produced as a result of the survey that's available on boardmember.com but also there um, to accommodate for those who do not like to just download a PDF. We have an interactive web page that presents the content of the white paper. The, the, we also have some integrated clips of directors we've interviewed and what they had to say about some of the questions we asked in the survey. So it's really dynamic page where uh, you can view all of the survey results. Also on boardmember.com, if you go under the research tab, you'll find um, the, the What Directors Think main page over there. Well, it's always refreshing to understand what's on the minds of 
the people sitting in America's boardrooms and certainly what directors think is a reflection of that. And Melly, I wanted to thank you for taking the time uh, to join us today and give us the highlights. And we'll look forward to see what's happening in survey issues going on in the future. Yes, thank you, TK. Glad to be here. And that will conclude this edition of Diligent Institutes Inside Today's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take another look at a critical topic that'll help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Thank you.